I buy and renovate old homes, or as I like to call them, pig's ears. A pig's ear is worse than a fixer-upper. It's the worst house on the block. It's a house that's been condemned, abandoned, or left for dead. <laughs> I love it when people say, you cannot save this house. It's a big challenge, but that's part of the excitement. I'm rehabbing a 1906 Country Victorian. It's in Somerville, South Carolina, which is just about 30 minutes outside of Charleston. I've already done a lot of work. I started on the outside so that the new exterior would protect all the work I do inside. And then I gutted the whole interior. The living room and foyer went from bad to worse to absolutely amazing. Next, I'm going to get started on the breakfast nook, the sunroom, and I'll add on a side porch. The breakfast nook is an octagon room originally built as an open porch. The sunroom was built sometime after the breakfast nook, I believe in the 1920s. It was also a porch and was later enclosed. I demoed most of the house all at once so I could see what I was dealing with structurally. The house even gave me a few gifts along the way. Holy cow, why is this brick all buried? This is good stuff. I tried to save the floors, but in the end, the wood rot and termite damage were too extensive, so I literally had to gut the house down to the dirt. I'm in the sunroom, we're ready to take on the structural issues and moisture issues that we're ready to tackle right now. The breakfast area needs to be filled in. This is the lowest point in the house, and so we have this area filling up with six, eight, 12 inches of water, so that's gonna be filled in. Same thing in this area, the sunroom. We're gonna take it all the way up and reframe these rotten areas of the ceiling, and we'll be good to go. The octagon room was a strange bathroom with a big tub when I bought it, but I'm gonna turn it into a breakfast nook that'll be right off the kitchen. Once the crawl space is filled in and sealed with a thin layer of concrete, I'll add the flooring system with joists, girders, and subfloor. I'm gonna install shaker-style bench seating and a reclaimed light that I pulled from the foyer. After the structural issues are addressed, the new sunroom will be a warm and bright place to welcome guests in from the side entrance of the house. I'll add some classic wallpaper to the sunroom, and then I'll install reclaimed hardwood floors and open up the ceiling with a ton of groove planking that's installed on a slope. Just outside the sunroom door, I'm going to build a traditional Charleston-style porch. This is my new side porch. We have water issues out here. The water gets trapped up in this area right here and it seeps under the house, adding to our moisture issues in the crawl space. Now, the solution for that is a roof. Not gonna be a big roof, but it's gonna be come out to about right here and it's gonna take on that same slope as we have on the sunroom. Here's what I'm thinking for the side porch. The foundation is gonna be constructed using those antique bricks I found under the kitchen floor. I'll add new stairs, deck, and a sloped roof to keep water away from the foundation of the house. Then I'm gonna work up some custom railings and corbels, and they'll match the front porch. This part of the house is gonna to have to be completely rebuilt due to extensive structural issues that I found during demo. I need to install a brand new floor system that runs from one wall to the next. We have to replace this 100-year-old 8x8. Eight eight. Okay. Now this whole thing is rotten where it went through the masonry. Now that moisture was the biggest problem. This beam went through the original fireplace. It was encased in brick. That trapped the moisture in it and caused it to rot. We're gonna tie our new two by 10, which is gonna be flushed with this, in with these that have been here the whole time. Sounds good. Okay. Like a knife through butter. Oh, look at this big old nail. Oh, it's pretty cool. It wants to come out of there. It's almost like a spike. 
I mean, this thing's like four inches. Oh, I like it. This is over 100 years easy. This is really not a big deal. I just really like it. <laughs> Let's put in those new beams. All right. All right. You ready, Freddy? It's going to be nearly impossible to find a beam to replace the one that's rotten. So Josh and I are going to rebuild it with three LVLs that are nailed and glued together. All right. He likey. So we still got to do the pier and the footer and the girder, but let's get over on that sunroom and get to work on that. OK, sounds good. Now that we've rebuilt the floor system in the sunroom and the breakfast area, we can knock out the rough end, we can complete the insulation and drywall, and we can start the side porch. side porch today. Okay, here we go. Okay. We're gonna work our way from the top down. We're gonna do the roof, and then we're gonna start with the deck framing and work our way up from there. You good? Uh, yeah. Oh, perfect. I like it. All right, these beams are in place. Now we're gonna move on to our rafters. Tying in this new roof to the existing roof, this is the trickiest part. This is where the new and the old meet right here in this valley. So those two angles coming together with this third one, everything has to be just right. We have to figure it out right the first time. If we get it wrong, I could get a leak inside the house or compromise the structure. the house. We had 1% chance of rain today. We got to cover up the house. We just got a pretty vigorous shower. We had to scramble around, cover up material, put plastic on the roof, had to send the crew home early. Sometimes Mother Nature just makes everything a mess. We've got sunshine in the forecast today, so we're back at it. During demo, I found 750 bricks from the crawl space that were originally part of the fireplace in the kitchen. They're at least a century old, and I'm going to use them to build the piers on the side porch. Hey, Robert. Hey, how's it going? These are actually looking better than I even thought they would. Yeah, for being uh, almost 100-year-old bricks, these look pretty good. So this is going to match the piers that were here originally. So we're just using them a different way on this pier right here. I wasn't able to save any of the original flooring in the octagon room or sunroom, but I found the solution that's almost as good. This flooring came from a cotton mill up in the upstate. Cool. So oh, it's okay. reclaimed, probably was some kind of a beam or a joist. You can see like there's a nail hole right there. Every once in a while, we'll have some of those details from the past, right. which is perfect for this house that was built in the same time and period as that cotton mill. Yeah, bring back that character. OK, let's nail this bad boy. Uh, so Trent. Yeah? Since you marked the board wrong, I cut it wrong. Did you really cut it wrong? Yeah, see, this is what happens when I work with you. <laughs> I'm really glad we got this wood flooring done today. Next is this ton and groove planking on the ceiling, and we got to get this finished today, too. How's it look? I think it looks good. Okay. 
We have three boards that have to be cut in an angle, and then we're just gonna cruise. Are you locking in? I'm trying to see where I'm going up at. We've gotta be careful on these first few rows because if we don't get it right, the whole ceiling will be off. <laughs> we got a bow in the middle, so if you nail that one, then I'll be able to get this one to come in. <sighs> Am I getting it? Yeah. This room is an inch and a quarter out of square. You and I are probably the only ones that are gonna be able to notice that. <sighs> okay, it's not bad. I think we got it. I think it's very close. Cutting roof planking on the ceiling would have been much more common 100 years ago because drywall wasn't even invented back then. This tonning roof planking, it's going to brighten it up and it's going to give it an authentic feeling like when this room was added 50 or 70 years ago. That's the last one. I love it. We're building the window seat here. We're gonna have seats on five sides of this octagon room. We're framing it up, then we're gonna do the MDF on the face and then trim it out. We're gonna create a panel look on all five sides. There's gonna be a large round table in the middle. And what this bench is gonna do is create balance in this octagon space. Looks good. Let's tech them in. Breakfast area benches, all finished. Next needs to be painted up. My wallpaper guy, Mark, is on the way. I'm really excited to see what he has to show me when he gets here. Hey, good hey. to see ya. How are you? How you doing? Good to see you. How's your project coming? It's coming along great. I'm ready to see some wallpaper. I've got a surprise for you. I found, I think, just what you're looking for. Oh, I like it. Nice. Oh, great. This is going to be perfect. Pineapple is significant in Charleston, very popular, because it's a sign of hospitality. Now, that dates back to, like, 150 years ago, when the sailors would be in the West Indies. They bring back tropical fruit when they come into port, and people would take the pineapples and they would put them on their door and that would be a sign to everyone all over the city that the man of the house was home and then the family could accept visitors. So because of that, I wanna have pineapples in this sunroom. We're building the stairs to the new side porch. All right. All the way to the top of the step. You got room? Yes, sir. Me like it. Mother Nature's messing with us again. It's starting to rain a little bit, but we're going to push ahead and finish our porch. rain is really starting to come down. <sighs> this water is rushing underneath here, and I want it to go that way. I want it to go towards the drain, not continue to come under the house. Dang it. This rain is really starting to come down. I don't want water in this area we're trying to work. Rainwater is going under the porch towards the corner of the house where I've had all kinds of issues with water from the very beginning. Not only is it sloppy, but it starts to get dangerous because we got our power tools in there. I don't want those cords falling in the water, shorting things out or tripping the breaker. So we got to get this water from here to the ditch and the storm drain out there. I should have dug this trench a long time ago. That's 
setter. Man, it was just, it was just coming in at us. Yes, sir. I'm really frustrated with the mess that the rain has made, but I checked into the house and it's all dry. So I'm gonna focus on getting the porch finished. Now that the foundation of the side porch is done, I can start focusing on the architectural details of the front porch and make sure that those get transferred to the side porch handrail. What I'm doing is scribing, transferring these dimensions and this exact curvature detail onto my board to create a template so that I can have this, this architectural detail on my side porch. There's my template. Even though this is new, it'll look like the front porch that was built in 1906. There we go, nice. This light fixture was in the foyer. I took it down during demolition, but I think it's like half a century old. I wanted to keep it somewhere here in the house, and right here in the sunroom seems like the ideal spot. It's got some flowers in there and some other cool details. Somerville is known as Flower Town in the Pines, and this light has a lot of cool flower details on it, which was another reason I wanted to salvage it and reuse it somewhere else in the house. Now I need to apply this solution to the paint so we can clean it off and um, see what's underneath. This fixture is cleaning up nicely, but I think I'm gonna repaint it. And I'm gonna go with a bronze color because that's gonna match other fixtures that are in this space. And then it'll be ready to hang here in the breakfast area. I found the perfect paint blue, and that's what I'm gonna use to paint my porch ceiling. Paint blue is a traditional color in the South. Some people paint in that color because they believe it keeps away evil spirits. Other people like to paint it that color because paint blue looks like the sky and it extends the day a little bit longer. I like paint blue simply because I like how it looks and it feels traditional and it feels that much more like Charleston. Nearly finished renovating the sunroom and breakfast nook in my 1906 Victorian. Just a few more details left, including some new landscaping. I regraded the area around the house after the rainstorm, so new sod and plants add the finishing touch. The paint's dry, and now it's time to put this back together. If you will just hold the base of that light. All right. Take the weight off, and I'll splice this in. So what do you think? Do you like it? I like it a lot. It's amazing what a different color can do to a piece like this. Everybody's going to talk about this when they come into this room. I finished the spaces on the side of the house, the octagon room, the sun room, and then the side porch. It's given this side of the house a whole new life. Outside, we've gone from a soggy, sloppy water issue, and now we've transformed it into a great side porch. The side porch is classic country Victorian. Feels like it belongs on this home because it ties into the details that we have on the front porch as far as the corbels and the great handrail details that have been here since 1906. I love how the wood flooring in the sunroom turned out. To go from the brick linoleum that we had when I started to this reclaimed lumber from a cotton mill in the upstate with the nail holes and the knots, it's exactly the look I was going for, and I love it. 
I usually don't put wallpaper in my homes, but I love what we've put in the sunroom. It's subtle, it's classy, it's not overly decorative, and the pineapple is a symbol of hospitality in Charleston. One of the best things about the sunroom is its connection to the breakfast area, the octagon room. It's hard to believe that this was a bathroom when I started. Now it seats at least six. It's open, it's bright, it's totally what I wanted it to be. The main feature in the breakfast area is the custom bench that stretches in front of the five windows that were here originally. It's shaker style, so it's simple, but it has some great details that make it look like something that could have been made in a cabinet shop. Now that I'm finished with these three spaces, I'm more than ready to take on the kitchen. I'm gonna move it to its original spot in the front of the house, and then I'll finish off the oldest part of the house with a bang. Coming up on American Rehab Charleston. It's completely destroyed. What do we got here? Oh, this says an old hotel. Oh, man. We only got those two pieces. There was nothing left in that truck. Right. I just realized I have a big problem.